Hello again! Welcome back once more. As usual, this is Becca, normally going by Nightcat or Nightcat's Meow when online. And welcome back to my black box reser chamber here for another week discussing Linden scripting language. Uh, this particular week is actually going to have some relatively simple code, but also some interesting things you can do with it. We're going to go over a little more about advanced lighting. I'm going to reiterate I believe I showed you once a simple thing for turning light on and off, but I'm going to show you more complexity about what you can do with that this time. So, without further ado, on to discussing the topic of projection lighting. If you start with your basic Mark 1 cube, We're actually going to need more than one of these, but this one is a start. To see this best, we're going to set this to blank. And we are not, absolutely not, going to use Fulbright. Now this will be our control box. So first we're going to go over just the basic code involved. And then we're going to get into how to get fancy with it, because not all the settings we're going to discuss are really easily controlled by code. There it goes. It was just taking a minute to warm up. Do, 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 do. Ah, screwed myself up there. Boom. LSL. And then... Set primitive parameters. This one's particularly fussy because you have a few different varieties of doing it. Set primitive params, set link primitive parameters, and set link primitive parameters fast. We're going to do the simpler version of just set primitive parameters. And there's a lot of potential rules you can work with. Make a couple quick functions and a toggle. Integer equal whoops. Light equals false. And set primitive parameters. Now the specific rules we're gonna want to play with are going to be for light. Prim point light, there it is, and this is the specific data we want for it. Copy and paste that. Integer boolean, that's whether it is it's true or false, that determines whether or not it is on or not. Vector color, this is just like any other color vector in SL. I'll do a refresher on how to get a color vector at the end here, just so that you'll have it fresh if you're hunting straight to this particular video. One. A great way to get a refresher for what properties you want is to actually go to here and hit point of light. So basic default are intensity 1, radius 10, and fall off 0.75. Radius 10, fall off 0 0.75. That's your good 
basic default, this thing gives off light. And of course, the off version, all you really have to do is change the Boolean value to false. We will not need a state entry if light light equals false off else light equals true on and not absolutely necessary but it's not a bad habit to some people would argue whether it's a good or bad habit um, in LSL it's not really all that essential but in some other programming languages it makes a big difference it's a little thing that I learned when I actually got my degree in it setting to midnight so the room is nice and dark now and we can see the effect that moving this back and forth will have It did not want to turn back on. Those look right. On print form. What did I do wrong? Ah, that's what I did wrong. I accidentally set the light to black. There was nothing wrong with the trigger code. I just derped out in the light setting. There we go. Now that's working as intended. All right. Now... The part we're going to play with to really start showing you a projection and how that interacts with the specular mapping on a prim is right here. That, we're going to set that to blank for now, and that changes how this light functions. Now it's projecting from specifically one face of the prim and one face of the prim only. In fact, if I were to move this over here, you'd see that shadow moving there. Projection lights can actually produce dynamic shadows if your settings in for your advanced lighting model are strong enough. So if you want to make a proper flashlight or spotlight or what have you, this is how you do it. I told you this was as much about the specific mechanics of lighting as it was about the actual code this time. There we go. That's a texture I actually made specifically for this purpose. Since most flashlights or spotlights would be circular, I created a simple texture because what this actually does is this projects whatever texture you have in here as a light. If you want a spotlight or a flashlight, a simple circle texture will do you just fine. 
if you want something that's projecting an image, let's say this caduceus here. You can do that too. And that will also affect the shadows over here. It's getting a little less clear on that, but it is there. You can do colored images too, that's perfectly fine. And it will remember that setting. Now, what I wanted to show you getting kind of interesting with this is if we pull back a touch, then go through and play with this. Shininess, low, medium. And this is just the standard SL shininess. You get an actual point of light that way based on where things are shining in from and where the considered star positions or any other lights in the vicinity in the sim are. Let me clear something out of there. I have evidently created a problem with one of my creations that I need to fix. Told you that one wasn't ready for prime time. Uh, Now, the part of the difficulty, though, is that this will show up the exact same way for pretty much anything that can create light. Same thing. Exactly. In reflections, you'll actually see, though, that point of light there. If you want to have good, dynamic, strong visuals in a sim, using projection lighting that will actually show the shape in a reflection is amazing. You can play around with this a bit, with a bit more control, by instead of going just high, medium, all the like. You can go in shininess is one part of the equation. I'm not really a, a true materials expert. There you go. You get it shines like a projection light there. It doesn't really show the shape though. However, if you go through and work environment, still a very low setting there. There, now you start to see the actual thing show through. get a little more distinctiveness. Basically, there's not much to this one. You see right there, that became much sharper as I played around with this. Faded. You even turn off reflection, and you get only environmental. You still shine that nice and distinct. And you don't see any amount of the normal 
shiny effect, or almost no amount of the normal shiny effect. But if we turn that back up, and turn that down, now all you get is the glossy shimmer. This is really nothing more than a basic introduction, but it should give you an idea how you can use changes in projected lighting to achieve different effects and how the material settings of the objects you're dealing with will change how well those are perceived. So if you want a club environment where the club floor really seems to reflect lighting and put patterns on it, you can do that quite well. It's particularly dramatic if you darken the floor itself. Now you really get that that vibe down there. It with none of the gloss, all you see is where the point of light is. So you can have a series of lights circling around and they will respond to shadows cast by an avatar or another object. So you can have a series of pattern lights showing up on a dance floor or creating an illusion of depth underneath a floor because as you see that reflection adjusts its relative position as I move the camera around. So you can create a strong illusion of depth using something like this. If I were to make this bigger Oops. Wrong form of expansion. And we're to play around with field of view and focus. I have to remember which setting clarifies this, because one of them does. But yes, yeah, you can play around with these and get all sorts of different effects and a real illusion of depth going on. So it's a fun optical illusion to play around with. It's a pretty cool set of tricks you can have with projection. The toggle for turning it on and off is a pretty easy bit of code. And I promised you the code for extracting color briefly before I conclude this lesson. I know it's a little code light, but it's really more about showing you what you can do with something in this case. Because it's not just enough to know how to create code. The best tricks you can, com you can do combine the artistry of knowing how to manipulate the virtual world and then enhancing that manipulation with code. So... Here we go. This one will give you a vector, so it has to be a string. Get color. And you have to pick a side, but in this case it's all the same. So all sides. And that gives you the actual color vector. Grab that, plug it into here, so you could even have something cycle through different colors. 
Um, one particular way to do that would be with a simple loop that every second or so changes the color. I can go over that more if people are interested in getting examples of how to set up a good little club environment. But that'll be it for now. So this has been Becca, often going by Nightcat or Nightcat's Meow when online. And as usual, good day, good luck, happy scripting, and I should usually have these videos out each week Tuesday by noon Eastern Standard Time.